Doctor Who is easily one of my favorite science fiction series, and like any good science fiction universe, certain rules need to be established. Because after all, what's science fiction without the science? Now given that we have yet to discover a blue flying time machine box, it's fair to say that the series has taken a few liberties with the science of its universe, but overall the rules of Doctor Who are pretty solid. Something that's always bothered me though is how inconsistent the weight of the TARDIS is, and more specifically, how it works in general. Think about it. Is a box bigger on the inside, but when you step into it, does it get heavier? Not to mention, all the stuff in there already, isn't that adding a lot of weight? It's pretty reasonable to assume that the weight of the TARDIS on the outside doesn't match the weight of everything contained within. Given the figure 5 million kilograms at least, we can apply some factual science to the problem. We know that an object's momentum is the product of its mass and velocity, so a tennis ball and a bowling ball moving at the same speed have unequal amounts of kinetic energy. The bowling ball, since it has a higher mass, takes more energy to speed up and slow down. Now, after applying the 5 kiloton figure to the TARDIS, a lot of scenes don't quite add up. Take for instance the TARDIS bumping into cars. Yeah, I don't think so. To a couple ton car, the 5 kiloton TARDIS is essentially a solid wall. How about the TARDIS crashing into Amy Pond's yard? At the speed it was moving before the impact, it would have lost just about 260 megajoules of energy in the crash. In fact, just sitting on the floor in most buildings, the TARDIS would be exerting so much pressure on its footprint that it would likely break through. Now that's all well and good for a 5 kiloton TARDIS, but odds are its mass is even greater than that. Considering the TARDIS contains the Eye of Harmony, basically a star about to become a black hole, and the fact that the least massive star we've discovered is 1.898 times 10 to the 29 kilograms, we can bring the TARDIS's minimum internal weight up to around 2 times 10 to the 29th kilograms at least. And considering the TARDIS expands infinitely, there may not even be an upper limit to its weight, at least internally. But on the outside of the TARDIS, the weight is pretty inconsistent. Sometimes it crushes the shed in Amy's backyard, sometimes Clara can carry it in her purse. So does that mean that the TARDIS makes objects lighter as they enter? Not really. In fact, there's a much more elegant solution that explains a lot of how the TARDIS's weight can change, and even why the TARDIS is bigger on the inside to begin with. Instead of thinking of space being crushed into a tiny box, think of the box as a portal to another dimension. And instead of traveling through space and time, the TARDIS is simply moving the doorway so that when you exit, you're at your destination. If the portal closes, however, all you're left with is a blue box. Not only does this explain how the TARDIS expands infinitely within a finite space, it's simply a passageway to another infinite dimension rather than a container, but it also answers the question of its weight. Any time an object enters the TARDIS, it's no longer within our dimension, and so its weight has no effect. The weight may have no effect, but interestingly enough, the mass of everything in the TARDIS still should. We see that light and sound as well as physical matter can travel through the portal doorway, so does that mean other forces could too? Clearly the star from before had some way to shield its incredible gravity from the rest of the TARDIS, but supposing it didn't, the TARDIS could easily behave like a black hole with the ridiculous gravity of its mass any time the door is open probably not a fun experience. Even though the TARDIS is a work of science fiction, the questions it raises from being bigger on the inside alone can lead to rather interesting potential explanations. I mean, we're talking about a British time-traveling two-hearted alien who lives in a flying box spaceship time machine. It doesn't have to make sense if it didn't want to, but the fact that it does make sense to the point where we can develop a reasonable explanation for things we've never personally seen before is what makes this science fiction as interesting as science fact.